1980s into the 2000s, it is arguable that in the sport of NASCAR, there were no two bigger stars in the sport than Dale Earnhardt in the start of this time and Jeff Gordon towards the end. However, somewhere in the middle, there was another guy that perhaps many overlook as a true legend of this time period, Rusty Wallace. This is my look back on the career of Wallace and why he's a true underrated legend. Born on August 14, 1956, Russell William Wallace Jr., better known as Rusty Wallace, is one of the brothers from the Wallace family of racers. And perhaps he would be considered the most well-known of the Wallace brothers, too. Before joining the NASCAR circuit, Wallace made a name for himself racing down in Florida in the late 1970s, winning a pair of track championships in the process. In 1979, he won USAC Stock Car Rookie of the Year honors, finishing third behind racing legend A.J. Foyt and Bay Darnell, and in 1981, he would finish second in USAC Stock Car point standings behind Joe Rutman. By 1983, he had graduated into racing with ASA and won a championship that season, besting out some of NASCAR's future stars like Mark Martin and 1992 NASCAR champion Alan Kowicki. Now, as for his NASCAR beginnings, oddly enough, he started with the man he would end his driving career with, Roger Penske, but the path in between would include some twists and turns. His first race was a 1980 Atlanta 500, driving in Roger Penske's number 16 car, where he would finish in second place in his first start. He would only run one more race for Penske in 1980 at Charlotte, where he would finish in 14th, and that would be where the two would part ways for the foreseeable future, and from 1981 to 1983, he would make a total of seven starts with Benfield Racing, as well as owner John Child, scoring just one top 10 with a sixth place finish at Charlotte. Finally, by 1984, he would get his first chance to drive full-time, driving number 88 Gatorade-sponsored Pontiac for Cliff Stewart, which led him to a best finish of fourth in 30 races, finishing 14th in the point standings that season, while also winning 1984's NASCAR Rookie of the Year honors. For 1985, Wallace returned to Cliff Stewart's team, only this time he competed in his number two Allugard Pontiac, and in 29 races, he scored two top fives and eight top tens. In 1986, Wallace made a team switch when he came to Blue Max Racing to drive the number 27 Allugard Pontiac. In the April race at Bristol that season, Rusty Wallace scored his first career win, which is appropriate looking back now at how good he truly was at Bristol and how much he loved that track. Wallace would also win the race at Martinsville this season and ended 1986 with two wins, four top fives, and 16 top tens, finishing sixth in the point standings. For the 1987 campaign, Wallace gained his first of two iconic sponsors when Kodiak Tobacco sponsored his number 27 Pontiac and would stay with Wallace for the next three seasons. Through these three seasons, he would see many more wins and some iconic wins at that, such as his 1989 victory in the Winston Open, which caused controversy after Wallace spun out Darrell Waltrip on the final lap. Through these three years, his consistency only kept getting better as he finished fifth in the 1987 point standings, and in 1988, he would finish in second just 24 points behind 1988 champion Bill Elliott. Then, in 1989, Wallace and the 27 team owned by Raymond Beadle won the Winston Cup championship by only 12 points over rival Dale Earnhardt. However, despite winning the championship, the 1989 season was reportedly marked with bitterness between Wallace and Beadle, and in 1989, Wallace stuck with the team despite disagreements between he and the car owner because he was contracted through 1990. However, in 1990, the team did switch sponsors as Kodiak Tobacco left Wallace and Miller Genuine Draft would come onto a four-year sponsorship agreement, but here was the catch. This deal was exclusively for the driver, Rusty Wallace, so wherever he went, they would follow. So in 1991, when he was available, Wallace got back in touch with his first Cup Series car owner and friend, Roger Penske, and they were ready to go racing with each other once again. Wallace's new number would become his final number as he piloted Penske Penske's number two Miller Genuine Draft Pontiac, and he would also win the 1991 IROC Championship. Wallace would pick up two wins for Penske in his first season with them, one at Bristol and one at Pocono. During the 1992 season, he would only score one victory at Richmond in a Miller 400, which was actually the first victory using the chassis of his best-known car, known affectionately as Midnight, which he would use in many wins over the next six seasons before the car was retired from the fleet in 1997. During these years, Wallace's best season was arguably in 1993, which also featured two of Wallace's scariest crashes at Daytona and Talladega, in which he got airborne and flipped violently in both. Wallace won a total of 10 races in 1993, including all three races in the month of April, and probably one of his most emotional victories came at Bristol in April. Following the tragic death of Wallace's friend and reigning NASCAR champion Alan Kowicki after his flight in the Bristol crashed, when Wallace won this race, he performed Kowicki's iconic Polish victory lap, and in every other race that Wallace won this season, he would do the same. Despite winning a total of 10 races this season, Wallace would still finish second in points to Dale Earnhardt, 80 points behind him, primarily because of a stretch in the summer of 1993, where he would finish 38th, 29th, 21st, and 39th before getting back to contending form. In 1994, Penske and Wallace switched to racing Fords, and in 1996, Miller Genuine Draft rebranded their sponsorship to simply just Miller Beer, and the next year in 1997, Miller once again refocused their NASCAR sponsorship to promote Miller Lite. By 2000, Rusty Wallace would secure Bristol Motor Speedway as by far one of his 
most favorite and most successful tracks of his NASCAR career, as in the spring race here, Wallace won his eighth race at Bristol, a track where he also had many second place and top five finishes, and this was also his 50th career NASCAR victory, which made him the 10th driver to win 50 or more races in NASCAR history. He also became the only driver to score their first and 50th career victory at the same track and in the same race at that being Bristol Spring Race. Wallace would follow it up at the 2000 night race at Bristol by scoring his ninth Bristol win and completing the season sweep here, and this became his 53rd career victory. In 2004, at another short track which Wallace was best known racing at, he would score his 55th and final Cup Series victory at Martinsville Speedway. Later that same season, Wallace announced that the 2005 Nextel Cup season would be his final season as a driver, and perhaps in the way it should be, he still went out competitive despite not winning in 2005. When a checkered flag flew at Homestead in 2005, Wallace would park his number two Miller Lite Dodge for the final time. In his final season, Wallace would score eight top fives and 17 top tens, finishing eighth in the point standing, following his 13th place finish at Miami. After retiring, many people had often asked Wallace if he wished he would have continued to race even part-time, and he said many times that he does believe he could have still had a few good seasons left in him, but ultimately he became a contracted analyst of ESPN's motorsports coverage, where he would cover many NASCAR races and even some IndyCar races, and he would remain with them until 2014 when ESPN's NASCAR contract would expire. On top of his commentary roles, Wallace was also a team owner within NASCAR's Nationwide Series, but I will hold off on talking about this too much, as I would rather save that subject for my Rise and Fall series. In addition to this, late in 2005, Wallace also played a huge role in designing a new speedway for NASCAR, Iowa Speedway, which when you see the track today, you can clearly see this track had a touch of Rusty's love for short tracks in the design, as it bears a striking resemblance to Richmond, where Wallace won six times. In 2009, Wallace's racetrack hosted its first NASCAR Nationwide Series race, which was won by Brad Keselowski, which is very fitting considering that today, Brad Keselowski is the current driver of the Blue Deuce with Miller Lite, and in 2013, Brad Keselowski would introduce Rusty Wallace on stage when he was inducted into the NASCAR Hall of Fame. His career in NASCAR as a driver and owner, on top of business interests such as his numerous car dealerships, which I grew up knowing of in East Tennessee, definitely have earned him my respect and the respect of many others across the country. And even though the history books will show he only had one career championship, I believe because of the talent he had to compete with, that was probably the only thing that ever held him back from more. 26 years in NASCAR's Cup Series, producing 706 career starts, equaling 55 wins, 202 top fives, 349 top tens, 36 pole awards, nearly 20,000 laps in the lead, one championship, 17 seasons finishing in the top 10, and seven seasons in the top five. To me, it's pretty certain that Rusty Wallace may have just been one of NASCAR's most underrated legends. Now that I've recapped the story of Rusty Wallace, what do you think? What were your thoughts on Rusty Wallace? Drop a comment down below and be sure to give the video a like. If you are new here to my channel or if you just haven't done so already, then I invite you to please hit the subscribe button and be sure to turn on notifications for more content like this. Also, I invite you to follow me on Twitter at DannyBTalks to stay in touch. This is Danny B and thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye guys.